Okay, now that we've got the head and we've got it in a, in a folder nice and tidy, it's easy to start working on other parts of the creature. So I have a really good collarbone here, but the collarbone doesn't connect with the head. I need a neck to connect with the head. And the problem is this neck, even if I resize it, it can work with that head. I can make it work, but it gives a very different look, right, than my inspiration. So this is why your sketch and your inspiration is quite important. I want a neck that kind of spills over the top and it gives you a hunched over feeling, right? And so that's why this reference is going to be helpful, even though it might not be the shoulder reference I want. It can help. So that's where the angle of your reference really matters. And then I just angle that reference underneath my head as it is. And I'm going to hit Control-T. And I'm going to see where the overlap makes sense and distort it a little bit. Remember that we can transform and warp th these resources. We just want to try to always have them be believable. So that neck is working a little bit better. But then I'm going to add this chest to it underneath, right? So I'm just looking at the back part of the neck right now. Now what doesn't match at all is the coloring, right? And the lighting. So I'm going to go to adjustments. The lighting's not far off, but I'm going to go through my usual steps. We get lots of practice through repetition of adjusting the levels. There's a lot of really deep shadows here overlapping, but I don't want to make my shadows that deep. I want everything to be kind of evenly contrasted. So I might even limit the highlights a little bit. Not too much though. And just shift the midtones a little bit darker for that back part of the neck. Now I can adjust and go right to the big guns of color, hue, saturation. And I'm just gonna push it away from the yellows a little bit more into the reds. Still keeping it believable. Up the saturation a little bit. But not that much. There we go. So now this neck, this top part of the neck, will blend nicely with what I have. So then I can go to my head and go to that back layer and then start to erase away from it. So now we're connecting the head to a neck. We're connecting the engine to the chassis and the axle, the front axle. Though I, I'm going to use the axle from another one, but we'll get there. So soft eraser, large enough so you can see it. A little bit larger in this case, 100% opacity. First, get rid of all those hard edges. Nice and easy. Lots of overlap. Now I can go in with a lower opacity. And that's too strong, you see, because there's a bright highlight underneath where there was a really strong shadow. So I go back in my history. And I'm going to take it down at a lower opacity so I can go a little slower. And maybe a slightly smaller brush.
And if I feel my cursor start to lag a little bit, I just slow down and let, let the computer catch up with me. So between videos, we were talking about different computer systems. And I am working on a, a Mac uh, Pro book that is seven years old. So it, it does have trouble with these HTML5 browser-based software. It doesn't quite have the processing power for them all the time. And before you buy something like Photoshop, you want to know what the limitations of your device are. Right? That's why I always recommend you do the trial, even if it's only for a week, just to make sure it can run the software. Yeah, because if your computer doesn't have the RAM to run it and you've yep. bought it, you're pretty much SOL. Yep, then you just have to spend a lot more for a better computer. All right. Now, I don't need to get these perfect. We're going to learn some other tricks at the end of all of this to polish it. But that's starting to work, right? So I've got now a head connected to a neck, to the back of the neck. And now I have to work on the bottom of the neck, and that's from a different source. So really understanding your layers. And here I just want to trim that green frill. Again, getting rid of the hard edges first. I'm having trouble matching an ear from like a bobcat to like the fur of a deer. Just matching it in terms of its texture? or it's color and lighting. More color. Yeah, well, we'll do some kind of, don't think it has to be perfect yet. So for instance, I have trouble matching the lighting here underneath the, um, the horn. So what I can do later, once it's all themed together, is I can take the texture and lighting from here and clone stamp it at a low opacity onto some of these shadows. So you'll be able to, to bring colors over from another part of your creature, textures over from another part of your creature. But right now I'm just trying to get the, the anatomy more believable than the overall finish. So yeah, do what you can now and know that as long as we kind of cut it out and place it well, we'll be able to, to fine tune it later. That's like the wax and paint job on the car. Okay, so I've got that part of it now, and you'll see why I don't cut it out, because now I'm gonna use this part of this reference. Whoops, and bring it in. Okay, so now I'm really using my, my sketch as reference and understanding how much space that rib cage needs to have, right? It's not a tiny bit of space, it's a large amount of space. So I take this, ah, gotta stop hitting Command T, <laughs> and I hit Control T. And just like I did with the other neck, I can expand that rib cage out and maybe even inflate it by warping it on this top edge. Oh my God, them racks on me. Oh, I'm not leaving. Okay, so now I have a much bigger chest that I can kind of move into place.
And now I want to erase away from it just on the back edge with 100% opacity, soft edge. I can take all that away. And now you can see that big rib cage I've created. Now, before I do too much more, I can play with the lighting and the coloring and then transform it a little bit more. So most of what we're doing today is just cutting things out, playing with their lighting and coloring and transforming them. And we have about half, half an hour more, 25 minutes more. I just wanna get kind of the big components in place. So that next class, we're just we're trying to finish up and transition between things within class time before we submit it. All right, let's see. Now, control T. So now I need to just fine tune some of these angles and some of these edges and overlaps. And there's a few ways to do it. I could try to warp it and stretch it so that that neck matches, or I can erase away from it because I think I have the overlap underneath. So I can take the size of my eraser down. All right, so now I have kind of the outline I'm thinking of, of where that neck flows into the, the chest and you get the collarbone. And now I'm, I'm building the front end of that car, pretty believably. Okay, so now I can play with the levels, A little bit more contrast there. And the color. I can feel my computer slowing down a little bit, so I'm going to quickly save it. And I like doing it in Chrome because it shows me that it's saving and it's now named because I named it and then reopened it between videos. So it's now named Assignment 2 with my name. Now I'm gonna play with the color. Go to the big guns first with hue saturation. And really saturate it. You see all those colors that are in that drab lizard. Once you start to bring them out. And then I can target it. I can say, well, those blues are crazy though. Those are too much. So I'm gonna take down the saturation just on the blues. So it looks more believable. And then I can use dodge and burn. I want to burn at the neck a little bit. So at any time you can use some of these techniques. All right. Okay, that's good for now. That's good for now. I know it's not cut out cleanly. It doesn't need to be.